I'm like a broken record. That's all I think about. And he goes for it. <laughs> Queens Barmer are off the board. If it agrees, Queens are off the board. He's up in exchange. Well, each three pawn is tender. He needs to support that pawn. And right now for Magnus, when once the F pawn moves to F5, at least you've consolidated your own center, David. Yeah, I, I did say don't go for it this very moment because now the white rook has to go passive. And like you say, Tanya, great call. F5, you've connected your pawn chain. The black king is coming. And uh, the problem is you're also facing an endgame expert, Magnus Carlsen. I think what he should have done, Ivic, maybe was wait a move or two. He could have traded the queens pretty much at any moment. So uh, first he could have played moves like g3, got the white king closer, activated his rook, and then traded queens uh, at will. Now he's pretty much got the worst possible version. And Magnus has managed to do some wizardry here on the board. Uh, down materially, but is the one who's dominating the position. And right now he can take on e3 coming in with the tactics. Knight takes pawn in the air. Wow, I think he can go for it and quite happily go for it. Remove the defender, take this pawn with a check, most importantly, and then uh, take the white knight. Black would then have a bishop and two pawns for the white rook. And wow, Magnus goes for it in a different fashion. He locks down the queen side. He's actually only got one pawn for the exchange now, but Black's knight looks so dominant, Tanya. You can understand why Magnus would go for this. Soon these pawns will start running. G5, F4 ideas are going to be on the board. White's rook still stuck defending that C2 pawn and he's got six seconds to hold this position. Magnus doesn't only have the incredible ability to win winning positions, but he's also able to turn around worse positions. How do you beat this guy? Oh, you might not beat this guy, especially not in this position. Now the black pawns can start running. You're right, is that kind of Magnus magic, the end game wizardry. Regardless of being up materially and who's stopping the pawns from rolling down the board, F3 check incoming. Magnus doesn't do either of these two things. He's going for the C2 pawn. This is a Magnus Carlsen show. Yeah, Magnus Carlsen show. I keep trying to highlight pawns you can grab, but then uh, they get protected every time <laughs> uh, you want to start grabbing them. And oh, wow, look at that dancing knight. We talked about knights on the other board, but Black's knight just as uh, strong as the white rook right now. Normally not the case. But uh, here, Black Knight, because of the fact it's protected and has so many outposts to jump to, um, this looks over e3. I guess his idea is to play king to e4 and to throw his pawns even further down the board. I don't think that's possible to prevent. Knight e5 as well looks very strong. There we go. Centralization. Magnus pushing those pawns to glory. Maybe it's over, Tanya. Surely. And the thing is, when you're playing against Magnus and you have this position, in your mind you already feel like it's over. He's just coming in with his pawns and the king and the knight, and how are you guarding all of this with just four seconds on the clock? Magnus putting pressure on the f3 pawn, knight d2 taking control of all the squares. Are you going to rush in with e2 check? Magnus says, not just yet. f2 comes in, he queens, he wins the game, this is busted. It might be Magnus in three in this one, David. It looks that way, Magnus is on the brink now. And, uh, okay, Ivic has just resigned. White was actually almost Zugzwand. If the H-pawn wasn't off the board, it would be stalemate. Unfortunately, he had to push that pawn. And uh, Magnus, 